just a very brief excursus on uh, microRNAs. These are microRNAs are re reasonably new novel, although I mean I guess they're about twenty years old now. I, I just want to mention the way they work. They are transcribed as normal gene, as standard genes, but the way they work is that they do not become proteins. They become they are just very short RNAs, the length of about seventy nucleotides. And they work by recognizing uh, uh, messenger RNA targets in the cell and either degrading them or preventing them from becoming proteins. Now, the opportunity that we saw here uh, is that uh, you know it's much easier to work with very tiny genes than to work with uh, large protein coding genes. And then you know, we this is where we started becoming a bit creative as far as genetic engineering. Um, what we really realize is that the biogenesis of microRNA is pretty simple, in fact. And the only thing that the cell needs in order to process a microRNA gene is recognition of this like hairpin structure here. So then there is just a, two enzymes really that recognize the structure, cleave it, and then the structure, and then the microRNA is free and active, pretty much. So what we really, our, our reasoning at this point was to maybe we can actually create our own artificial microRNA genes, uh, but in a way that uh, uh, we can somehow hijack the, uh, the microRNA uh, uh, processing mechanism of cancer cells. And within, one, within the same uh, initial RNA, we can hide the several of these active, uh, uh, active microRNA structures so that when this is processed, we end up having a multitude of uh, uh, biologically, uh, biologically active microRNA, which in a way will uh, satisfy our need for a uh, 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 significant multi-targeting. And uh, so we, we defined uh, uh, several, uh, I guess, uh, engineering steps, uh, which in fact are pretty simple as far as how the, uh, the, the sequence and the structure of this RNA should be uh, in order for it to be a uh, you know, consistent uh, uh, and reliable and predictive uh, uh, in terms of like creating these uh, uh, artificial uh, genes. And then really the way it works is that uh, the beginning is just like in silico work where you design your whatever uh, RNA of interest you are, you have, then you, uh, you, you check uh, 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 still in silico how the structure of this specific sequence uh, is and looks like. Uh, and as long as there is formation of these, uh, uh, as you can see, these like uh, uh, stem structures, then usually that means that the cell will recognize it and, and process it. And this is just to show some in vivo studies in uh, uh, intracranial GBMs in mice, uh, showing that how you know single microRNAs, as you know, it's not new; they have some effect, but overall, it's pretty it's pretty moderate, modest. When you actually combine the, the, the three microRNA as a cluster, you have a much more significant uh, effect. And then, when you put this in the context of using the microRNAs to uh, somehow uh, stop uh, the the survival mechanism of the cells, uh, you see that. Basically, when you pretreat the GBM cells with the microRNA combination, uh, and then uh, either give timozolamide or radiotherapy, you see there is a huge increase in cell death, uh, signifying that again the, the cells have not been able to activate that epigenetic response. And we have observed that quite nicely also uh, in vivo, where uh, mice uh, receiving timozolamide uh, without, like this is normal situation, they only have a very short, uh, uh, short benefit, which is similar to what we really see in patients. But when the mice are pretreated with, the, when they have the microRNA cluster on board, then timozolamide is significantly more effective. And we took it up a, a step forward uh, and then, uh, you know, there is this concept of uh, uh, junk uh, DNA, and uh, which I think at this point, uh, everybody's probably familiar with, uh, you know, junk DNA is also what microRNA was considered to be a few years ago. And so we started thinking about the possibility of junk RNA. And so uh, we started thinking that probably during the process of uh, uh, RNA, you know, during the RNA processing, uh, there was some waste. And so we thought about uh, repurposing those uh, uh, sequences that uh, eventually that, that otherwise would have been wasted, like you know here in in black. And then, as long as we would be able to give them a specific structure, 
particularly to make the resist them resistant to uh, nucleases, uh, they will stick in the cell and have a predicted, uh, uh, a predicted biological effect. And so in this way, really, to maximize what we can get out from a single uh, uh, piece of RNA. And here is like one of the last iterations. Uh, this is like, this is again, a, a, an artificial RNA transgene, which has multiple, multiple structures here. Again, the three micro RNAs shown and plus other structures. For example, uh, we can design these to have upregulation of standard micro RNAs, but at the same time, we can also have RNA sequences that works by sponging bad microRNAs that are present in the cells. You know, microRNAs can also be uh, anti the tumor suppressor, but some of them can also be uh, uh, oncogenic. And so we can actually sponge these bad microRNAs using these uh, uh, tailored uh, uh, microRNA sponges. And other RNA uh, molecules as well, aptamers specifically, which are, again, uh, short sequences that bind to proteins uh, to their active sites and prevent them from working. So just to put it in, in context, you know, when we, the more you increase the complexity of these uh, uh, RNAs, uh, transgene, <clears throat> the, 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 the more targets you are able to, uh, to, uh, to modulate. And then, for example, you can, specifically chase uh, uh, fun cell functions. For example, MIR-21, it's probably the most abundant oncomir, like oncogenic microRNA in GBM, and it has a uh, clearly defined role in cell migration. And so here, for example, our three microRNA don't do really much uh, as far as uh, impeding cell migration. But when you add uh, the spawn, the, the anti-micro uh, microRNA 21 sequence, then you see that uh, uh, migration is actually uh, uh, blocked. And uh, similar for the for the aptamer, we designed this aptamer that was uh, uh, supposed to bind uh, uh, the NFKB uh, uh, P50, which is a component of the NFKB transcription factor. And basically when the cell process that, uh, it, these cell become unresponsive, as you can see here, it becomes unresponsive to uh, TNFA, which is actually the, uh, the, the most potent uh, activator of the NFKB, which is of also uh, significantly, uh, uh, it's a significant uh, uh, oncogene in, uh, in, in GBM. Uh, and this is what happens in vivo. As you can see, there is a progressive uh, uh, increased uh, uh, anti-tumor effect uh, as the cells uh, um, uh, express more of these uh, multiple, uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, sequences. And then uh, uh, to finish, and this is what we're working now on, of course, uh, you know, we are working towards the gene therapy, like a novel approach to gene therapy. And we, are we, are, we have been uh, uh, looking into intratumoral delivery, you know, being neurosurgeons, so you always want to try to do something in the OR. Uh, and we have some, some initial good data showing that we can actually use some viruses, in this case, then associated viruses to, to, uh, to deliver the transgene to the tumor with uh, some nice, uh, uh, response. But then uh, I'm quite excited now about using uh, these exosomes, which are basically microvesicles released by cells. Uh, and they are actually filled up with uh, uh, these uh, RNA molecules. And uh, we are working now on a process of making them targetable to the tumor. But the idea is to use them as a delivery vector, systemically delivery vector, which can be re reused several times uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, gene therapy. So in conclusion, again, really all these, uh, which is, I mean, again, as I said, uh, my conviction is that uh, in order to tackle GBM, we need to be, uh, we need to be able to, we need to be willing to accept the fact that probably there is not gonna be one single uh, specific target, but we are gonna need to be broad. Uh, and I think that this uh, blunting this, res this survival response, which is epigenetically mediated is actually a quite important vulnerability. The microRNAs are quite versatile for doing that. They're simple, uh, and particularly they really can work uh, together in synergy or in addition to other therapies that are already in use. Mm -hmm.